Hi everyone and welcome to this week's project, albeit a little bit late. I was unexpectedly off the grid for for a few days, so getting back to it here with a piece of uh, maple log that I've had drying for a couple of years. Uh, here I am just taking most of the bark off of it, uh, so it'll hurt a little less while turning. Um, you saw me measure it there in the beginning, it was about 17 by 13 and pictured here I've, I've cut it down to a somewhat circular size on the bandsaw so it looks a little different than I was than when I was taking the bark off. But I'm using a face plate uh, to uh, start the turning process. As you can see it's definitely out of balance which I knew but it was it was okay they, these kinds of turnings are, are slow at first I had a larger blade in the bandsaw so I didn't get a really good circular cut but that is okay this will work too so starting out uh, with the bowl gouge per usual as you can see when I stop the lathe there it's not the prettiest of cuts because it's at a round and you know the the gouge isn't hitting every every motion it's hitting air a lot of time and the cuts aren't going to be perfect but we're just removing wood at this point anyway so I do stop quite often to check to see uh, how the cuts are going you can kind of tell when you're cutting, like there you see some shavings coming off pretty consistently. But sometimes you want to see the marks on the wood, so I, gen I tend to stop and just check and either increase or decrease the speed accordingly. Now this piece was pretty heavy, it may not look like it, uh, you know, but it was a pretty large chunk of log to start with. And here I think it looks like it's going fast, but I think I was only at around 600 RPM here. So it's coming into a more round shape and uh, starting to look a little bit more like a bowl. You notice when I stop there, there's some natural edge on the bottom. Some of that is going to be left on. Um, You'll see in a minute what I mean, but it, uh, I'm not trying to keep any bark exactly. Just uh, keep some of the natural features of the wood. I'm not really adding anything to this. There's going to be no, you know, there's going to be no resin or inlays or anything like that. So this piece was, I well, I say this all the time, I'm sure, but it was a pretty gorgeous piece, piece of wood once it was turned and you found out what was inside. Um, it certainly wasn't, um, it wasn't boring, but it's hard to tell that looking at it right now, so I just keep on watching. Starting on the bottom here and what will be the uh, mortise, still deciding between a mortise and a tenon at this point I think, and ultimately went with a mortise. And at this point I'm checking out the side of the bowl and deciding if it's going to be you know, just this basic bowl shape or something else. And as you probably can tell by now, I'm starting to look like I'm looking into the pedestal type of bowl and that's exactly what I was doing. May not be so easy to tell here, but if you keep watching, you'll see the, the pedestal at a different angle. You know, the challenging part of this with the pedestal itself, although I think it looked beautiful, uh, was that it, the, the pedestal itself, the bottom of it, isn't round. There's that, you know, sort of bark inclusion area without the bark, but 
um, is still missing a piece and for that reason it didn't turn completely the way a normal round piece of wood would turn with that with that kind of chunk taken off even though it adds to the character definitely makes it harder to turn but not impossible So after I sanded uh, with 60 grit, I'm adding some Starbond CA glue in the black to some of the cracks around the bowl. There, there were some. There were not anything I was majorly worried about, but definitely didn't want this to keep cracking after, um, after using it or selling the bowl, whatever I'm going to do with it. Just wanted to make sure that things were made to last and some of the, with those minor ones that look minor at first they can grow so just want to make sure that uh, everything's going to stay tight so what I'm doing here is with a carbide cutter and easy wood tools negative rake I'm taking off some of that uh, Starbond CA glue you can take it off with sandpaper too, but sometimes it's easier to just make some light passes with with a gouge or a carbide and then sand the rest off. And here I'm back at the 60 grit. I don't show all of the sanding ever because the the videos would be much, much longer and uh, probably not as interesting, but if there's one thing I've found through the turning process for myself in the last two and a half-ish years, it's that sanding is usually more than half the battle. And when I started, I, I would go through the grits and think it was sanded, and then I would wonder why I had two marks. And... There were a couple of reasons I had two marks. I had two marks because I wasn't that great yet, but also I didn't know how important sanding was. Um, so sanding is important. Take your time. Go through the grits, inspect it. I started using uh, air compressor to get the, you know, the dust off in between grits just so I can have a cleaner surface to work on with the next grit. We're taking the face plate off here. And I will mount it in the chuck, reversed of course. And this is what will be the top of the bowl. Oh, and I should mention too that uh, from my last video, um, I do have some giveaways happening at the end of this video, so stay tuned. I'm giving away some sample kits of the X polishing paste uh, to three different lucky people um, that are selected randomly from the comments. For those who commented 20K, here we come. I think at the posting of this particular video we're at around 19,800 subscribers so 20k is definitely getting closer so thank you appreciate everyone's support more than you know so making some passes uh, with the bowl gouge this is one of my favorite parts is to just make a clean pass all in one, all in one pass, I guess. Um, here I'm just, you know, doing that and then going backwards because it's, it's what was sharp at that point and easier to uh, remove material. Um, but certainly 
it's very fulfilling to uh, to make those passes. I'm going to change out to the curved tool rests here in a minute. And if you haven't tried the curved tool rest, I do have a link to it in the video description. You know, some say it is a pricey. It's uh, I don't know, it's a hundred bucks, hundred and ten bucks, and it's a robust product and it fits. I have a Laguna 1836, so I spent 100, 110 bucks and I'm very pleased with it. It's an interior uh, curved tool rest. It's not made for the, you know, the outside. There's a different one for that. But this is uh, pretty sweet in my opinion. So continuing to uh, use the bowl gouge to get the wall thickness to near the final size before the sanding. I knew I wanted to leave this bowl uh, a little bit thicker because it was going to be a, a larger bowl. Um, this here at this you know thickness stage was a little bit too thick so I'm still taking quite a bit of material off uh, but just taking my time because you know, I didn't, I, I didn't want it the normal thickness of most of the bowls that I make. So I was just taking my time and seeing, keep stopping and checking using calipers. So after removing some more material, we're getting down closer to the final wall thickness. Not quite, but almost. And then after that, there is a little bit more um, star bond filling of cracks to do. This is an internal shear scraper by the Robert Sorby brand. I tend to use this to get some final cuts or scraping, sheer scraping uh, towards the end of uh, some of my projects. It's a newer tool to me, probably still getting used to it, but I think it works great. It's not a very expensive tool either. I think it was 60 bucks, 65 bucks, something like that. So some sanding, 60 grit to 80 grit to 120, 150, 180, 220, 320, and 400. And it was a combination of the power sanding with the drill and some hand sanding. And a little bit more star bond to fill some cracks on the inside which really met with the ones I already did on the outside. So filling them from, from both angles, it's always a good idea. 
There is a link to Starbond products in the video description with a discount code. Discount code gives a great deal, 15%, so make sure you check it out. So some denatured alcohol to clean the surface and then applying some sanding sealer. After one coat of sanding sealer dries and I've denibbed it, I start with the Axe Abrasive Paste. Also a discount code for Axe products if you want to give it a try, 15% as well on already really great priced products that if you are a woodworker, wood turner, yeah, you won't regret buying. So if you haven't tried it, try it with the PF Wood Turning 15% off coupon code. Here's the X uh, Polish Restoring Paste. Uh, these are some of the samples that are going to the winners from last week, which I'll announce at the end here. The sample packs are not the size that I just showed, but they there are the, they're there that product. They're the polishing paste. So it's a great sample size that you'll be getting if you won. So getting towards the end here, um, I do have to put the, my branded logo on it. One of the things I was most impressed about this bowl is the right there. Oh, you couldn't see it, or I didn't say it fast enough. But there was a there was some red in the grain. It was really pretty. So this ended up being about twelve by five, and the branding iron and a little bit of light sanding. And I'll show you the beauty shots here in a minute and announce the winners at the end. So good luck to everyone who entered. Uh, we are almost at 20,000, so stay tuned. Help us get there. There'll be a bigger giveaway when we hit 20K. Thanks again. Peace out.